Hey guys, let's take a look at uh, what's called radical denominators. And first, let's go back and do something old. You remember that if you have a, an irrational number, like a square root that doesn't work out to an integer as an answer, in a denominator, in algebra, that's not acceptable. We, we, what we do, we rationalize those. In other words, we turn these into rational numbers, which means r numbers that can be expressed as a fraction. And what we do is, of course, we multiply the top and the bottom by that square root of 6. And at the top, we'll get 18. Then we'll get, of course, 6 at the bottom. And what's interesting is, I'll show you what happens at the end of this. Of course, we can break this up into 9 and 2, right? That's a 9. The square root of 9 is 3. The 2 stays under the radical, and we have a 6 there. Now, look at that answer. And you can treat a fraction like this, which has a square root in it, but it, you can pull out this part here and go, is that reducible? Can you reduce that? Of course, the answer is yes. If you had 3 over 6 as a regular fraction, you just write 1 half. That's what you do. This could, you, can, you don't have to write the 1, but you can just write the 2 here. And the answer is the square root of 2 over 2. All right? Knowing how to do that. In other words, the idea is that your denominator has no irrational number in it, which is, you know, square roots that don't work out as integers are irrational. Okay? Go ahead and pause it for a second and copy this down. All right? You might think, okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply by the square root of 3 here since there's a square root of 3 there. And if you do that, of course, you get the square root of 3 up top. Then if you go the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's just 3, right? The square root of 9, which is 3. Okay? Then the square root of 3 times negative 4 is negative 4 the square root of 3. Uh, I still have a square root here. That didn't work. So that won't work. So we're going to have to try another tactic here. And this is the tactic, okay? It is something called uh, a conjugate. What you're going to have to do is multiply the top and the bottom by this exact term right here, except for you are going to change the sign in the middle of the term. You won't change the sign of this. You just change the sign of that right there. So the conjugate of negative 4 plus the square root of 3 is negative 4 minus the square root of 3. Okay, and of course you do the same thing to the numerator since it's a fraction. So up top here, you're going to get negative 4 minus the square root of 3. In the bottom, watch what happens. Okay, I'm just going to do this down here. You're going to, of course, let's just take the negative 4 and go all the way across these two. So negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Negative 4 times negative square root of 3 is positive 4 square root of 3. All right, and we're done. Now we have a positive square root of 3 we're going to multiply across here. So positive square root of 3 times negative 4 is negative 4 square root of 3. And positive square root of 3 times negative, well, positive times a negative is a negative. And the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. Okay? But look what happens here in the middle. Our conjugate has knocked out those two middle terms, both of which have an irrational number in them. So now we have a denominator that is rational. So 16 minus 3 is just 13, which is a rational number. You can express that as a fraction, 13 over 1. And there you go. And that is it. Okay? There you go. All right? And by the way, if you want to, in all these that you, uh, you, know, you rationalize the denominator using the conjugate, you don't have to go through the process of multiplying you know, this times this and then that time. You can just take the first one, negative 4, times the first one here, and then ignore the middle two, and then just take this one times this one. You can do it that way. Just save yourself some time. In fact, we'll do that in our next problem. Okay, so here's another one. Pause it if you need to. Copy this down. This one's a little different because it adds a two to the front of this, multiplying it by the square root of three. All right, but you tell me, what's the conjugate of this denominator? What is it? Okay. It's 2 square root of 3 minus the square root of 2, right? Okay. And again, we're going to do the same thing to the top. So here is our top. And let's go ahead and distribute the 3 all the way across here. So 3 times 2, 6 square root of 3. Uh, 3 times the negative would be 3 square root of 2. All right, we got that. We're good so far. All right, now let's take the bottom. And again, you don't have to do the just do... The first one times the first one, and then the last one times the last one. All right? Let's do the first one first. 
Well, two times two is four. Three the square root of three times square root of three is just three, right? So we're done with those. Don't bother with the middle two. I got a plus here times a minus. That'll always be, of course, a minus. And this will be, of course, square root of two times square root of two is just two, all right? So you know this. Four times three is 12, minus two is 10. And there we go. That's all we got. Okay. Did I do that right? Okay, I think so. All right. There we go. Okay. Let's try the uh, practice problems. There's just two of them. Try A and give me a pause there. All right. Here is our conjugate. Now, real quick. Don't, don't put positive 3 and change that and then change this. Only change this. So if you, if you change this to a positive 3, pause it again and do it over. Don't change this. Only change this to a negative. Okay, so this will be negative 3 minus square root of 7. And, of course, same thing here. Negative 3 minus square root of 7. And, of course, 1 times that is just going to be the same thing here. All right, let's work on this. All right. I'm going to go negative 3 times negative 3, 9. Boom, done. Uh, positive times a negative, negative. This will be just 7, right? So 9 minus 7, 2, and that is it. That's all we got. Okay. All right, pause it and try B. All right, conjugate here is 3 squared of 2 minus the square root of 3. 3 squared of 2 minus the square root of 3. Okay. All right. Let's go across here. 5 times 3 is 15 square root of 2. Then 5 times, I mean, negative 5 square root of 3. All right. Got that. Good. Okay. This one, let's do these two. 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of 2 square root of 2 is just 2. Okay. So we got that done and done. All right. A plus times a minus. This will always be a negative down here. And then, of course, this is just going to be 3. Okay. So we have 18 minus 3, which is 15. Now, before you shut it down, look at one thing. This 15, this, we'll call this a 5, detach it from the negative for a second, and that 15, all, we can reduce this entire thing. You're not going to see an answer in the back of your book unless they make some kind of mistake uh, where this is not reduced. So you have to get to the back of your book and go, oh my gosh, this doesn't look like mine. Look at your terms in front of your square roots and the term at the bottom and see if all three of those can be uh, reduced by some number. Obviously, the answer here is 5, right? So 5 goes into 15 three times, and then, of course, the square root of 2. 5 goes into you know, negative 5, negative 1 times. You don't have to write the 1 there. Just write the square root of 3. And then 15 divided by 5 is just 3 as well. So that will be your answer, and that is as far as you can go. Okay. All right. See you guys next time. Have a great day.